Hello, welcome to another video by Moxa Marine. In this video, I am uh, wrapping up the uh, building of a 6.2 liter Mercruiser. Um, I've got other videos on this, but I haven't done a good job videoing because I've been a little bit sick lately. Um, anyway, um, the uh, what I've done now is install the harness. By the way, this engine came to me in pieces. Nothing was a, nothing was built. The harness was a separate wad of wires. Um, Everything was taken apart. It was a big rust bucket, and uh, I've restored this engine uh, without really anything to go by other than my knowledge. So um, I'm now putting on the harness, and I'm able to do this because of my knowledge of fuel injection. So um, I'm going to explain to you how I put the harness back on without really having anything to go by. So what I did was I started with a, a common uh, starting point, which is this uh, bracket here. This is your boat uh, to uh, engine harness um, interface connector here. So I first mounted this bracket on the back of the cylinder head. By the way, it's powder coated. It was all rusted up. I cleaned it up and powder coated it. Um, so I got to your connector here. Then uh, there was just a big mess of wires where I identified what's what. So I know that this is the uh, alternator. This was the alternator uh, wiring here. It loops underneath the, uh, the exhaust manifold, which will be right up in here. And I know that that's an alternator connector. It goes right there. And I knew that this was the ground wire to the alternator. And also needed this hack wire right here as a distributor or to your uh, alternator power back to your battery. I've got to replace that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna replace it and try to run it inside the loom or just run it directly from the alternator down to the starter and be done with it. Um, it's all kind of sealed up back in there. So it's kind of hard to put any wire in a, in a harness that's been hacked. They also hacked, this is a, by the way, this is another wire that's coming off that back here at this main group in here and i can tell it was a starter that's your main fuse for the whole system this goes to starter and you see that's where the, the orange wire is hacked there and it's also a hack right there so um i might just have to replace this whole fuse it's kind of corroded so i may have to just cut this ring terminal off and replace the fuse and everything this is your starter the signal that starts your uh, starter by the way i haven't mounted the starter yet i'll do that in a minute after i finish this harness um but anyway so I just generally run these wires down here near the starter and let's connect to starter later. This is a knock sensor connector. It connects to a knock sensor and uh, I don't know where it is. I gotta find it, but it screws into the block right about here. It screws, it screws into the drain fitting right there. So I gotta find the knock sensor and hook it up. Um, if I don't find one, I'll have to buy a new one. But um, the wires come out of the loom, just gotta put it back in the loom and it'll take care of that. But the knock sensor goes right down there. All right, so that's that. Um, coming across the top up here. So I loop these wires down around. I know that this bundle right here, this all this mess right here, including the mercathode um, corrosion system, connects to this this stuff right here. That's your starter relay, and that's your one of your main circuit breakers right there. And that's a starter relay, so I know how that works out. I'll show you that when I'm done wiring it up. Um, then again, you've got, uh, let's see what else was there. That's that. Um, so there's, there's a, uh, you had a bundle of wires right here that went in two directions. So this bundle here came over this way. You got two injector connectors here. You got, I'm not even sure what this does. It's a loop, but loop back in. Uh, based on the color, I'm not real sure what that is yet, but um, purple and gray are usually for ignition. So that may have something to do with but I don't think you'd tie those together. Um, you know, I'll, I'll look at the, the uh, diagram and we'll figure out what it is later. So two injector connectors here, intake air temperature sensor connector there. Keep on going. You got two more injector connectors here. And I don't, by the way, this is a batch fired system. So it doesn't really matter which one you put it on. Um, uh, let's see. If it was not, it would have different color wires. You got a green and a blue. And you got a, a green and a blue so really it doesn't matter um it could be a bank fire but i believe it's batch fire um we'll get to that later um by the way there's supposed to be a there's a crank sensor on this motor it's right down in there if you can see it let me see if I can get focus on it right there there's your crank sensor um i don't remember seeing the crank sensor connector so it may it may be a distributor base but i don't think it is because based on the type of distributor it came with this motor so I've got a little bit of a dilemma to figure out where the crank sensor connector is. I'll figure it out in a minute. All right, continuing on, you got uh, this wire here, which is all tan. That goes to your, uh, that's your sensor for your gauge and your dash. 
This is a map sensor. It goes, connects right here. The coolant sensor ties in right here. The coolant sensors are yellow with a black, yellow wire and black wire. Black is ground. And then you've got your map sensor, which is green. The centerpiece is green there. Your 5 volt reference is gray and your ground is black. This is your uh, Mercruiser uh, oil, level in, uh, oil level alarm that's not found on cars, only on, on Mercruisers. And I think that's all for that end of the harness. Over here, coming back this way, you get this big loop of wire coming around this way. You got your two injection connectors there. This plug here, at first I thought it was the throttle position sensor because it's shaped the same, but it's not because it's got a it's got a green, a gray, and I think a black. And the reason I figured out that it's not the uh, throttle position because I found the actual throttle position is right here. It has a gray, a blue, and a black. So I know that, that from car automotive uh, fuel injection, the blue is your throttle position sensor. That's where that goes. This four prong here is your idle air control motor. I need that based on these wire colors here. By the way, this is all General Motors uh, fuel injection uh, concepts and terminology. The uh, MEFI is based on General Motors uh, work. So it turns out this is not a throttle position sensor. It is a fuel pressure fuel pressure sensor right here. And it plugs in right there. It's missing the, the uh, little uh, rubber uh, weatherproof seal. I've got some extras of those. I'll put those in. And then that leaves this wire, which is going down. Well, actually, there's two wires here. And you can tell the fact it's got large ring terminals on it. These are grounds. They go to the, on the land on a uh, ground uh, bolt for the the bell housing back there, or fly hole cover. Then this is left over, and this is the fuel pump connector. This is what runs your fuel pump. The electric fuel pump mounts right down there, and this goes down the mount and uh, runs your fuel pump. And it's controlled by the computer, by the way. It's turned on and off by the um, ECU. Then you got these two plugs which are relays um i had to buy brand new relays um because the other ones got stepped on and i broke them so um these are your two mefi or uh yeah mefi three plugs and this is your diagnostic your data link connector and um uh, so i'm going to be uh, developing a tool to my own tool custom tool to read the diagnostic data off this uh, computer once i get it running all right, so that's, uh, I believe that's all for the harness. Um, covered everything. Um, the There's some wires are cut back here, I believe. So you got a distributor that goes in here. And I don't see the plug for the, by the way, these were sliced. I believe these are part of your Mercathode Merc system. Um, again, this is all, uh, that's all power for the, uh, this goes up in here, and I, but I don't see any connectors for the distributor. So it may be this stuff right here. Maybe I know I have a pretty good feeling the blue and the uh, well, this pink wire is part of the distributor system, and that purple could be uh, that purple is probably a reference. Um, I'm sorry, purple white is the reference for a distributor ignition. Um, so we'll have to see. I'm not the ignition system on this thing is still up in the air on me. I've got to figure that out. Um, I know enough how to figure out. So also, by the way, there's a one more plug down here. This is the oil gauge. This is a blue, anything you say a solid light blue wire that goes to the oil pressure gauge that screws in right here, which I haven't put in yet. It goes right there. That's all the harness. So um, got some more work to do and figuring out the ignition, but uh, for the most part, the harness is installed. I'm now going to install the uh, exhaust and hook up the computer, the relays, uh, I got to install the fuel pump system and then uh, this engine will be ready to fire up. So hopefully I'll have it running by this evening and uh, deliver back to the customer. All right. Thanks for watching. And uh, see if there's anything, let me see if there's anything else I can talk about. Um, I don't know where this Mercantho system mounts. Uh, I'll have to search the internet. Let's look for a boat and see how it mounts. I know it, I know it mounts somewhere up here in this general vicinity. I don't know exactly how it mounts though to the, to this area. I'll figure it out. Okay, to wrap up this video on uh, electronics or the 6.2 Merc Cruiser, as it turns out, the uh, distributor pickup, the Merc Cruiser pickup, connects directly to the harness to these two uh, butt splices here. They're polarized where we've got male, female. They only plug in one way. And the uh, pink goes to the white with red stripe, and the purple goes to the white with green stripe. That's how it works because I've been running.
But as far as the coil goes, there was a, uh, two wires that were cut off. It was a white and red. They go to the coil. And they connect to the, uh, the white connects to the negative side of the coil. The red connects to the positive side of the coil. And that's it. So what, the way it works is the uh, computer, this is your MEFI 3 computer, gets a signal from your distributor. And it has to be, the timing is set by rotating the distributor to 8 degrees. With the, uh, I've got another video on how to set the timing. But you uh, jump for the A and B terminals on the, on the uh, data link connector. And then you can set the timing to 8 degrees. Um, and so like I said, the computer takes over the timing by getting the signal. And then since it controls the coil directly, it controls timing. Um, this engine kind of threw me off because it's got a crankshaft position sensor, but it's not needed. It's, there's not even a, a harness connector for it. So Mercruiser tends to do that. Um, on some of the later models, they'll have a crankshaft position sensor, but they won't have a they won't have a connector for the cam sensor, which sticks out of the side distributor. And those, if it, the bottom line is, it has, it has a crankshaft position sensor, crankshaft position sensor. The computer controls the timing, and it's, it can adjust it. It's not you can't make changes to it. Um, but if it has a specific signal in the distributor that goes to the computer, then you can adjust the timing. All right, so that wraps up the electrical on the 6.2 Merc Cruiser with MPI, uh, multi port fuel injection. And uh, this engine's uh, about ready, ready to be loaded up and delivered back to the customer.